89 points. That's how much a finals team just put up in 2024. And really, that 89 points is misleading because they took their rotational players out really at like 75 points. So the Dallas Mavericks playoff rotation really only put up like 70 to 75 points. The rest of the points came from garbage time, bench warmer players. So this was one of the most pathetic performances I've ever seen from a, an NBA Finals team. The final score being 107 to 89, an 18-point victory for the Boston Celtics. And the way this game looked, this is going to be a sweep. If this continues, uh, we can talk about that in a separate video probably tomorrow about the outlook going forward. But if the 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 trends of this game continue, this is going to be a sweep. The Boston Celtics absolutely annihilated the Dallas Mavericks basically in every which way. And we're going to talk about all that right now in this breakdown of game one. Got my notes here. I was recording the entire game. So let's get into it. This game was competitive for about seven minutes. It was back and forth for the first seven minutes. It actually looked like it was going to be a fun, competitive game. And it turned out to really only last the, that first half of the first quarter. And this is really what I think set the tone of the game. There was a possession the Celtics had where they basically got like five different attempts to score. They had like four offensive rebounds, and then they had one where I think Lucas stepped out of bounds. So that gave them five tries to score. And that automatically set the tone for this game because the Dallas Mavericks were completely embarrassed when it came to rebounding the ball throughout this entire game. So that possession right there kind of told me everything I needed to know about this game. And then, of course, you have one of the biggest parts of the Celtics' domination of the first half was Chris Stapps Porzingis was phenomenal in the first half of this game. You know, coming back, he'd missed 30-plus games with the injury. Uh, he had eight points on a red-hot start, three of four from the field. Then the game was basically decided right here by this run. The Celtics went on a 23-5 run, which basically that was right there the end of the game because if you look at that, what's 23 minus 5? 18. What was the final score of the game? 107 minus 89. That's 18. <laughs> so the, the game was essentially decided in the first quarter. The Mavericks, like we said, they had a little bit of a run in the third quarter. We're going to talk about when we get to that. But outside of that, the Celtics just utterly dominated them in every facet of this game um, after this run. And I think a big part of that was the Dallas Mavericks putrid rebounding, especially um, letting the Celtics get so many offensive rebounds. That was a disgraceful part of the Dallas Mavericks. Seemed like they had butterfingers every time they were trying to get a defensive rebound. We can move on to the second quarter now. It was really a lot more of the same stuff going on. Uh, Boston, I think, really put their foot on Dallas's throat in the second quarter because they just continued with their aggressiveness with hitting their shots, playing incredible defense, and really not much difference of what happened in the first quarter and the second quarter. It was kind of the same thing. Um, and Boston, at one point, had their, their highest lead of the game in the second quarter, a 29-point lead, and Chris Stapps finished the first half with 18 points. He did cool off heavily in the second half, but he was sensational in the first half on the offensive side of the ball. In the second half, he was incredible defensively. So let's get into the second half of this game with the third quarter. Drew Holiday was incredible. Looked like he was clamping up Kyrie Irving, and this is where I think we get into the biggest story of the game as a whole is Kyrie Irving was flat out awful in this game. Kyrie Irving was terrible. Uh, I don't know if the boos in Boston were getting to Kyrie, but he was just bad. Like He was missing wide open shots, wide open layups. He finished this game 6 of 19 from the field, which is 31% field goal percentage, 0 of 5 from 3, finished with 12 points and 3 turnovers. Had some of the sloppiest turnovers I've ever seen from Kyrie Irving, you know, who's widely regarded, rightfully so, as one of the best ball handlers, if not the best of all time at that. Yet he had one of the, some of the most awful turnovers I've seen. You know, some of the lowest IQ stuff I've seen from Kyrie Irving. And, uh, you know, he finished the third quarter 6 of 19, but he finished the game 6 of 19, which means he did absolutely nothing at all in the fourth quarter. And I know he got pulled, 
but he was in there for a little bit and was completely passive, did nothing. He was just terrible in this game. That is by far for me the biggest story of game one was Kyrie Irving was terrible. And if he continues to play like this, the Dallas Mavericks have a 0% chance of winning this series. Um, then we get into this little glimmer of optimism for the Dallas Mavericks where they actually had a nice run. This was really their only point in the game outside of like the first seven minutes of the first quarter where the Mavericks looked like they actually had a shot because their defense drastically improved. I don't know what the hell changed, but their defense looked a lot better in this little run they had in the third quarter. And Luka, uh, it seemed like up until this point, he was taking a lot of like just bad shots, just taking like heavily contested shots. But then, you know, this little point in the third quarter, he started taking, I felt like better shots, open shots. He hit two threes in a quick stretch that cut their lead or that cut the Celtics lead to eight. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive to fight all the way down from 29 in the second quarter and then about midway point of the third quarter. They got it down to just an eight-point lead, but then that was kind of it. That was kind of the last um, gasp from the Dallas Mavericks because they did have that little run, and they got really close to coming back, but then it, it just kind of went downhill again. They had back-to-back -back travels from Kyrie and Derek Lively. And again, they just looked sloppy on offense here. Uh, Chris Stapps, he definitely cold off for uh, Boston like we touched on. Uh, but he did have a big impact on the defensive side of the ball, particularly as a rim protector. He was incredible in the second half of this game. Um, and then another thing out with Dallas, outside of Kyrie, I think another thing we can talk about is uh, Derek Lively was just targeted defensively in this game. I mean, he was he couldn't stop fouling. I mean, I don't know what he if he finished with six fouls, but at least at the time I made this note, he had five fouls. It seemed like he could not stop fouling to save his life. So that's one thing that really needs to be cleaned up going forward. Um, the Celtics defense to close out this game was incredible. You know, and I re initially put their perimeter defense was incredible, but then I erased that because their overall, even their paint defense was phenomenal. Chris Stapps, like I said, was great, but specifically Jalen Brown defensively, he had two monstrous blocks. He was like flying around. I think Jalen Brown was probably the, the most impactful player for the Celtics, at least defensively. I mean, he was sensational in the, in the, in the third and fourth quarter. Then we get to the end of the third quarter. The Celtics were up by 20. The game was basically over here. The fourth quarter, Luka and Kyrie played about five minutes, and then they came out and they threw all the bench warmers out and basically threw the talon, and that was the end of game one of the NBA Finals. So let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, definitely one of the most underwhelming games I've because I, I was highly anticipating this game, and it just did not live up to it. The, the Mavericks did not show up to play for game one whatsoever. Like I said, if this continues, this is going to be a sweep. This was brutal for the Mavs. So let me know what you thought about this game down below. What do you want to see going forward? Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.